Hi, everybody. I am Anna Litton. I'm the assistant director at the Robbins Library, and I am going to be talking today about um, some tips tricks that people might not know about using Libby, which is our one of the tools that we use at the library to access uh, digital resources, digital library resources, which is uh, everybody's best way of getting library resources right now. So we're going to be going a little bit into Libby a little bit about into looking at how to access items from our shared resources within the state of Massachusetts, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So I'm excited to do that. Um, before we get started, just a few words about Libby. Uh, Libby is the app, Libby by Overdrive is the name of the app, and that is the app that is available for Overdrive. So sometimes people hear Overdrive and they ask if it's something different from Libby. Libby is the most up-to-date app to access Overdrive, to access Overdrive materials. Um, if you're looking in your app store and it is available, the Libby app is available in the iOS store. It's uh, the Android market, Google Play, I think that's called. And through um, uh, that app is available for Windows 10 devices as well. So there's a bunch of different places to get that app and it is a fantastic um, app to, for people to have. It is my number one used app. So I personally use it all the time. Hope you are able to do that as well. Um, as we're going through today's content, I just wanna remind people, feel free to ask questions in the comments. I'm gonna see those and I'll probably respond to those towards the end of the session. And all right, let's get started. So I'm using, today I'm using Overdrive on this ancient iPad. Thank you to my husband for loaning me his very ancient iPad. Um, the number, we use this, uh, device for my 10 year old who is a huge huge um, Libby fan and he mostly listens he listens to a lot of audiobooks so um, when you are in your Libby app I know it's really hard to see on your screen oops I'm into the wrong part here hold on one second let me just get back to my Minuteman account okay fantastic um, in my Libby app once I'm here we have two separate sections really for using um, Libby um, someone's asked me to slow down. I certainly will do that. So sorry. Thank you so much for that comment. Um, once you have downloaded the Libby app, if you've never played with it before, and I think I mentioned, uh, for those of you who are just joining now, uh, we recorded a FaceTime Live on getting started with Libby, installing Libby onto your device, and syncing Libby to your library card. Excuse me. We, we recorded that two weeks ago. Um, you can find that at the ACMI page. So if you have never um, used Libby, uh, take a look. Take a look for that video, and we'll probably rerun that in the next day or two. Um, so once you have Libby, we have two separate parts to our Libby app. We have our library where we're going to look for our titles and we have our shelf where we keep all of our different titles. We are going to be focusing today on using our library to kind of expand what we are already seeing and add some additional information there. So that's going to be the focus of what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be talking about adding libraries. I'm going to save some time for an Ask Me Anything About Libby as we are wrapping this up. So we'll have plenty of time to answer all of those questions. Okay, uh, I am here in Libby right now, my 10 year old, and I'm going to come over here to my shelf. I can see that right now my 10 year old is listening to a book called Spy School by Stuart Gibbs. I see he's 70% done with that title, and he's going to be needing the next book in that series soon. I also see that he has been on a Gordon Corman kick. <laughs> so we are going to be adding some Gordon Corman books for him as well. For those of you who are new to Libby, um, when we switch over to our library tab, which is on the bottom left of our screen, I'm going to click over to my library. I've got a search button in the top, so I can search for, I'm going to search for Gordon Corman for my um, avid 10-year-old listener right now. I'm seeing the list, I know it's so hard to see this in the, with the reflections and everything. I'm seeing the list of all the Gordon Corman titles that I have, and when I'm looking through here, I see that a lot of these are checked out. So I can place holds on a bunch of these. Um, see, Restart, I would need to place a hold. The Unteachables would need to place a hold. Almost all of these titles, um, I would need to place a hold to get these titles. So I certainly could do that. I could place a hold here and get those Gordon Corman titles as they become available to me. 
Um, when that happens, you get a notice that that is held in a hold shelf for you, and you do need to actually check that item out directly to you. For those of you who've been using Libby for a while, that function is a little bit newer. Um, for a while, items would check out directly toward, to you, and then you would have to download those. You now have to actively check out your Libby titles. It just takes a second. You'll get that email notification, touch checkout, and you can get that item directly to you. Um, have see some people are saying hi. Hi, Katie. Thanks for being here with us today. Um, but if I don't see what I'm wanting here, Libby has some the ability uh, in Massachusetts, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, our libraries have joined together to open up Libby titles to um, patrons, library patrons from across the Commonwealth, which is fantastic. By doing that, that system is called the Reciprocal Lending Agreement. And we here as Minuteman patrons, Arlington patrons, who are members of the Minuteman Library Network, are able to check out items from all of the library networks across Massachusetts. Uh, this feature rolled out um, about 16 months ago, and it's been huge. It's really given Arlington patrons access to many, many more titles, and it is really fantastic. So we're going to go through using those titles today, using those additional resources. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments, and we'll try to cover all of those questions, at least towards the end of the session. All right, so I am going to come back to my library page here and look for some additional titles. Um, I see that all of those Gordon Corman titles are currently checked out of Minuteman Libraries, and I want to get a Gorman, uh, Corman title for that 10-year-old. So since I already used that search feature right up there, it's so hard to see this, I'm sorry, oops, left, right, uh, right up at the top of my screen, I do have that search function, hard to see in these two screens working together, but on your screen you should see that. In the top right of my screen, I've got a little kind of a, it's like a little kind of person with the hair pulled off. The Libby um, icon is up there in the top right. And when I touch on that, I see for me, I see that I have two different libraries listed. Most of you are probably only gonna see one, the Minuteman Library Network. I see, and again, it's so hard to see on my screen. Whoops, to the right, to the left, and I'm gonna tilt it a little bit so people can see that I've got the Minuteman Library Network and the Noble North of Boston Library Network listed there. I also have a button that says I can add a library through my page as well. This is a really, really useful feature that so many people don't know about. Hi, Lynn. I see we have another person here to see us. Thank you so much today. So what I'm going to do right now to kind of increase my options of getting a Gorman, excuse me, a Gordon Corman title for that anxious 10-year-old right now is touch on the Add a Library button down there. And when you do that, um, I've already done this, so we can see the option here. When you type in Minuteman right in that field there, and I'm going to do it here so that we can all kind of go through this process together. Um, Minute, uh, excuse me, Libby functionality is pretty much the same on all different devices. So I'm, again, as I mentioned before, I'm doing this on an iPad, but it works pretty much the same everywhere. So when I type in Minuteman and I click on search, oops, I should try to spell that correctly. Um, if I type in Minuteman and spell it correctly. Okay, now it's coming up. When I type in Minuteman, I actually see more than the Minuteman Library Network. I also see the Sales Library Network, the Clams, CW Mars, Boston Public Library, Old Colony, and Merrimack Valley Library Consortium, as well as the Noble North of Boston. These are different library networks available here in Massachusetts. And because of our reciprocal lending agreement across our library networks, Minuteman users with your Minuteman Library Network card are able to access materials from all of these different library networks, which is huge. It really gives us a, such a larger library of items um, to see. And one thing patrons should know too is that there's actually, um, many of the items of course are the same without these. Everybody has gotten um, the newest Louise Penny title, all of these different libraries. But there certainly are many instances where the different library networks don't have the same materials. And if you cannot find something in Minuteman, it is certainly worth your while to take a look through some of these other library networks. And we can kind of see all these, oops, trying to tip so you can see, seeing all the different library networks. So I wanna see um, if Boston Public Library has some of those Gordon Corman titles. So I'm gonna to touch on Boston Public Library there. Now I've been switched over to the Boston Pub Public Library webs uh, Libby website. So now I'm looking at resources that 
excuse me, I just went back, that um, the BPL has purchased for uh, BPL patrons. And again, because we are sharing access to our Minuteman titles across the network, across the networks, um, you, Minuteman Library Network holders, card holders, have access to these materials as well. So here I am in Boston Public Library, and I'm going to search for, again, I'm going to search for Gordon Corman. Oops, what's going on here? I'm going to click on search for a book and enter Gordon Corman. If you, you might notice that your search, your searches hold. So if you have Gordon Corman entered at your last library, it's still there. So I, all I had to do was touch on Gordon Corman, and I'm going to see all the Gordon Corman titles available um, through the BPL this time. Um, and I see place hold, place hold, place hold, but I do see that I can borrow Flashpoint, which is one of the 39 Clues series. Not interested in that one, but I also see um, that I can get the fifth book in the, and I could scroll down, 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 there's a bunch of different items here. Oh, I see that Son of the Mob is available. Son of the Mob was not available in Minuteman Library Network. It was checked out. But Son of the Mob is available in um, the BPL. It's a pretty funny book, so I think he's, he needs a funny book right now. We all need a funny book right now. So I'm going to touch on Borrow. Um, and it's going to ask me, because I don't have this, I'm not officially entered as a BPL patron. It's going to ask me to, I want to add this library, excuse me. Um, and it's going to ask me to enter my library card number. So essentially what you have to do in order to really make the reciprocal lending library agreements work across all these networks is to kind of create yourself as a user at all of these different library networks. It would be super convenient if you were already created as a user. It's a little clunky. You do have to go through this process of adding your card to these different libraries, but it does give you the ability to have a lot more um, titles available to you. So it's definitely worth your while. So I'm going to enter my library card number here. Pause for one second while I do that. Um, if we were actually in a class, I'd tell you to talk among yourselves, but you're just going to wait for one second. Okay, so I've entered my library card number. It's going to ask me to enter my PIN. Again, if you're having any trouble with your PIN, um, I think everybody knows by now you should either call us or email us. That information is available on our webpage, and we can reset your PIN for you. I happily know mine after all these years, um, but I entered it incorrectly. <laughs> I thought I entered my card wrong, and it turns out I did. So I'm going to go through this process one more time. So I'm going to enter my library card, and I'm not going to talk when I do this. Bear with me for one second. So now I've entered that. I'm going to come back to my PIN. Um, I have a hard time typing on iPads. Okay, great. Oh, I'm still having a little bit of trouble, but we'll go back. Um, what's going to end up happening then is that when I'm in my libraries and back in my library here, I can enter, I can just check that item out directly to my um, shelf. And when I come back to my shelf, I'll, you would be able to see if you have an item checked out from one of those other items. The nice thing about your shelf is it keeps all of those items from all of those different libraries available for you um, right there. Um, easy to see those, they're all collected in one area. I can see again all those cards that I have. I can add as many of those cards from those different library networks um, from across Massachusetts as I would like. And then I just need to toggle back and forth. So if I want to now, I've already added Noble. If I want to see what kind of um, Gordon Corman titles are available there. Uh, again, hard to see the screen. Got a little weird light here. Ooh, getting it there. And again, I can see that since I've already entered Gordon Corman, it's there on my search screen. And I can just click on Gordon Corman and I can see which Gordon titles, Gordon Corman titles are now available in the um, Noble Network, the north of light of uh, north of Boston Library Network. And I'm here and I'm seeing, again, a bunch of these. Oh, I can borrow on Gifted, which is actually a book that he's been looking for. So I'm just going to touch on borrow from that one. My card is already there. I've already entered it in this, in this system, which is, again, Noble. So when I click on borrow, um, it's thinking for a second. Um, don't forget, you can always change your, I forgot to change my time here. I generally check out for 21 days and I forgot to edit my time right underneath the title. Hope everybody can see that. Um, whoops, hold on. 
um, right under the title of my book, I can see uh, the days. And again, before you touch borrow, you can always change to 714 or 21 days just by touching that um, option that's right underneath the title of the book. So we have a visitor here from Hawaii. Hi, Allison. Nice to see you. Um, so we can add all of those items in there. And then just we've really opened up the amount of the sheer number of books that are available to us when we use this option to um, add titles. So again, those couple steps, so easy to do this. When I'm in my library, all I have to do is touch on, and I'm gonna adjust my screen so everybody can see, this little person who lives in the right top right-hand corner of my screen, touch on her, either toggle back and forth between the different libraries that are there. At any point, I can touch on add a library. Uh, and I'm going to add, what am I going to add right now? I'm going to add CW Mars. Clicking on CW Mars. That's the Central and Western Massachusetts Area Libraries. So clicking on there, um, I'm going to search for Gordon Corman again. My kid is going to end up with so many Gordon Corman books because of this. He usually uses audiobooks, and I've been checking out whatever I can right now. I'll return them when I'm done. Um, let's see here, is anything available for Gordon Carmen? And again, I can always use my refine button in the top right hand corner. I want to see items that are available right now. I'm going to check, choose on availability. And, um, Born to Rock. That sounds very much like my 10 year old. Not positive, but I think so. So I'm going to touch on borrow. In order to borrow this, let's add a library card for CW Mars. We already went through this, but we're going to do it one more time. I'm visiting from another library. That's what I forgot to do at Boston. Um, so I'm visiting from another library from Minuteman, so I'm going to go through that option. I'm going to enter my card number. Choose Next. Entering my PIN. Clicking on sign in. They're contacting Minuteman to make sure I'm actually a patron. Before I touch on borrow on this title, again, I'm going to come back to my time period. I'm going to change this to 21 days. I like to check out books for a little bit longer. I can always return them earlier, but if there's a hold, I wouldn't be able to get it for longer. So I'm going to choose that for 21 days. And now I'm going to touch on borrow. Because I've gone through that process of adding my card, entering, saying that I'm a visitor, a guest from another library, and entering Minuteman Library Network, because I then entered my library card number and my PIN, once I, once this book downloaded, oops, all done, downloaded, people, people who are new to Libby do often wonder how long it takes to download a book. This book, a reading book, an ebook, downloaded in the time that I finished a sentence, um, really fast for those. So now when I click onto my libraries again in my top right hand corner, I see that the libraries are entered are CW Mars, Noble, North of Boston Library Exchange, and the Minuteman Library Network. I can toggle easily between any of these to switch and search through their catalogs whenever I want. I'm going to cancel this one. So I can, I generally, I always start in Minuteman. Um, I have been using uh, overdrive titles from Minuteman libraries for so many years. <laughs> And I do always start there, but I can always switch to these different libraries so easily. Um, and again, if I wanted more of those, there are, how many did we talk about? Um, there are eight different library systems that you can search for. And again, all you need to do to see those again, once I click on add a library, once I click on Minuteman and it's already here, I can see all of the different library systems that are there. I see the three that I have my card linked to right now. If I want to link my card to sales, um, that uh, the sales library network includes the Cape Cod libraries, hence sales. I'm going to again search for a title. I'm actually going to do a Louise Penny one this time. I know that Louise Penny has been on some kind of low key, perfect for me at this time. Um, so I'm going to search for Louise Penny. I'm going to again click on the refine button. I just want to see what's available today. So I'm going to click on availability of everything that's available now. I bet nothing is going to be available. Let's see. Oh no, great. So sales does have some Louise Penny titles available right now. Uh, number four, ah, great. I my, oh, I actually have a hold already on still life number one. But I'm going to check out the audiobook for number 14, Louise Penny, Kingdom of the Blind. 
when I touch on borrow here, I again, it's going to lead me through the process. Again, I'm saying I'm visiting from another library. And I'm going to select that I'm visiting from the Minuteman Library Network. It's going to ask me to enter my library card number. I'm going to go through that process one more time. Bear with me here. So I try to remember my library card number. I know it, don't worry. Then it's going to ask me next to enter my password. Um, and I'm going to say yes, I'm going to sign in. Great. Why is it not getting in there? Okay, great. They're connecting to my library, and I see it's my library card number here. We can all see that I should block that off. I can ready to borrow it. Many of the library networks that are available to us default to a 14-day checkout period. Sales defaults to a 7-day checkout period. So again, right under the title of my, oops, I'm going to hold this up. Right under the title of the book that I'm checking out, oops, I just went um, back a little bit. Just lost that by touching the iPad in the wrong place. Right under the title of the item, uh, I can select 7, 14, or 21 days. I just touched that button again to go back to... Um, uh, 21 days for that audiobook, even though I'll probably finish it quicker than that, there's no problem in adding that for a little bit longer. So again, if we can, this part is always hard, sorry, turn it so you can see it. Okay, Und right under title, Kingdom of the Blind, I see seven days. I'm just going to touch on that and change that to, excuse me, to, I'll say, 14 days for that one. Uh, and then when I touch on borrow, it does take a few minutes longer. This was the audio, uh, is this the audiobook? I can't remember. Takes a couple minutes longer for that to download if it's the audio, but I don't remember if this one was. Um, once that is downloaded, in addition to downloading, because I added that library, the next time I want to look for that item, all I have to look for an item from the sales library network, all I have to do is touch on that that um, library network to toggle to that. Give this is taking a little bit longer to download since this is the audiobook. Just taking one more second. It looks like it's almost done. Not quite. But again, if I come into my library, my libraries now, touching that button on the whoops, on the right hand side, I now see that my libraries include um, the Sales Library Network, CW Mars, Noble, North of Boston, Minuteman Library Network, and I should probably go through and add BPL. Haven't done that yet, but I will do that again in a second to add that. Uh, and again, all I have to do is toggle between those libraries to get that option. So our library card really has, it does give you, your Minuteman Library Network card does give you um, quite a bit of access to additional libraries. It's a fantastic benefit of having that card and it really does open up information from all across Massachusetts. I have been um, at a number of different tutorials I've been at and trainings I've been at at the Minuteman Library Network. I've been really surprised to learn how little overlap there is between our catalogs, um, our digital catalogs available through Overdrive. So I definitely encourage you, if you're not finding a title that you're looking for through Libby, our Libby or our Overdrive catalog at Minuteman, please do go out to some of these other libraries. You might find some of these options. Uh, we have a question from a viewer right now. Uh, if this tutorial will be available on ACMI, it will. Um, ACMI has been so generous with us in these past few weeks in posting a bunch of our Facebook Lives. So our story, book, our story times and our training tutorials are all going to be available on ACMI. Big thanks to ACMI for really supporting the library and the community of Arlington during this time. I'm happy to take any additional questions right now. So if people do have any questions, please feel free to type them into that comment box right now and we will certainly answer those. Um, I want to remind people that even though our physical locations are closed, we, um, at speaking on behalf of the whole staff, I truly can say that our mission is to serve the public and our, we are checking our email constantly. Um, the phone calls, if you call the library, that phone number is being forwarded to our director who is answering those questions herself. Um, if you have any questions, leave them on our Facebook. We're really trying to respond to 
all the issues that are coming up for our patrons. We want you to be able to access all of our materials. So please do take a moment to try to get in touch. We are, we are so happy to answer any of those questions. I want to remind people really briefly to close about some of the other ways that you can access digital content through the library. We've been doing a lot to try to add additional digital content available for our community. Um, since uh, December, uh, our last open day was March 12th. Since then, we've added two new sources for digital content, including Hoopla. Hoopla has, um, it includes ebooks, audiobooks, some movies, some TV, a bunch of different sources. One of the nice things about Hoopla is that there's, um, it's not one user per one item. So if you um, are checking out an item on Hoopla, uh, everybody can check it out. So your entire book group can read the same book on Hoopla right now. And that's happening through the library book groups, which you can read about on our blog. We, are, um, we have a couple of different library book groups right now that are reading Hoopla titles. The Color Purple is one. Um, the Book Woman of Troublesome Creek is another. So all kinds of interesting titles available through there. Great for books, audiobooks, great for audiobooks as well. And there's some film, some additional sources is there as well. Um, we just added Acorn TV. If you have any trouble with your Acorn TV uh, access, please look on our blog. We have a big blog post about how to make Acorn work for you. I know I've launched my kids already into my favorite Acorn show, which is Miss um, Fisher's Murder Mysteries. They've been enjoying that. Um, and don't forget Canopy, which is another great source for streaming film available through the library. Um, we are going to continue doing videos on little quick tutorials on how to access library resources. And they will all be on ACMI. And I want to thank everybody so much for coming today. So thank you so much. See you later. Enjoy using the library. And please do continue sending us questions. We really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. Goodbye.